One second. Okay, so we're now recording. And uh, thanks, Terry. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for joining uh, me today. Um, I wanted to talk about Microsoft List because it's a product that we haven't had access to, at least from my perspective, uh, with the Microsoft platform. But when we went uh, all Microsoft on campus, we now have access to dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of Microsoft products and Microsoft Lists. Um, it's one of those that I found useful in some of the things that I do. And um, <clears throat> Hopefully, there's some applications that might be useful for you too. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, <clears throat> I put together a brief PowerPoint presentation. Uh, hopefully, you can all see that. And uh, <clears throat> just want to talk about the real basics of Microsoft Lists. I'm not going to go into detail about all of the functionality or, or features but just some of the things that I used. And we'll, we'll create a list you know, in our little session here, and hopefully we'll be able to add to it and look at some of the other options. And we'll look at a couple of lists that I've created that have helped me in my work. So Microsoft Lists. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, here it is. So here's our agenda. We're gonna talk about what lists are, where to begin, potential uses, um, creating a list, and we're gonna look at forms within lists, which I found very useful for it. So what is Microsoft Lists? If you go onto the Microsoft site, they'll say it's to track information, to organize your work, and to customize for your team. So everything's related to team, these teams these days. Um, I've shared my lists with individuals. I haven't actually shared them with a team yet, um, but I'll show you how that works too. So on the Microsoft adoption site, it says they are simple, smart, and flexible, so you can stay on top of what matters most to your team. Track issues, assets, routines, contacts, inventory, and more. So those are some of the applications that you can do with lists. There are others. <clears throat> so, you know, I asked my wife about this. What about lists? You know, what should I tell people about it? And she says, well, how's it different from Excel? or has it different from Word or SharePoint or your to-do list or planner or any of the other multitude of products that Microsoft provides. You can do most everything you can in lists and other products like Excel. Lists is very much a structured tabular format. Uh, so you'll recognize it um, in many ways as looking very similar to Excel. Um, what I've seen is that Excel is really geared towards numbers uh, and is limited in its data types where lists um, have different data types that you can use um, and add value to um, your table, if you want to call it, of lists. A uh, to-do is basically a, a personal product. Um, so you add your to your to-do list, and those are things you can do. Uh, and planner is more like project planning, um, and it is not really uh, focus specifically on particular issues or tasks or items that you want to address. <clears throat> There's lots of information about there on the internet about it. You just have to search, you know, lists versus um, Excel, and you'll get some details on that. So how do we access lists in the UNCG environment? Um, everything we have access to is available through m365.uncg.edu. You, you go to that site, you sign in with the UNC login, and you get to what's called the application launcher, or the little nine buttons that sort of look like, uh, you know, phone uh, push buttons. Um, wherever you see that, you can get to any apps related to Microsoft within products. So you'll see that in um, Outlook, you'll see it in calendar and any of the other products you have. So whenever you see an app launcher, you can get to all the other Microsoft products. Lists, um, you can see the little icon there. It's four different colors, the yellow, orange, reddish, and purple colors. <clears throat> That's the little icon for lists as opposed to any other product that you see. <clears throat> so potential uses, and I'll show this when we get into lists by looking at the templates. <clears throat> Um, you can click on the new lists button, which is represented here on the slide too. 
or you can use any of the templates for like issue tracking, onboarding, or training of new employees, uh, recruiting, event planning, project tracking, or reading lists, and all kinds of other things. There's probably about 20 different templates on all the aspects you can use. So um, here's just a couple of guidelines on creating a list, what to think about as you think about what a list might be useful for. Um, so you say, what's the purpose of the list? Is it to uh, inventory items in your department? Is it to uh, track uh, tasks that you've assigned to say student workers? Um, there's all kinds of things that you can use it for, but you need to have a purpose of the list. <clears throat> are other people involved? Is this just a list for you or are you gonna assign other people tasks based upon what's on the list? Uh, what information you want to track? Um, <clears throat> What information you think you might need about a specific task? Uh, if there are any deadlines or timelines or dates that are applicable for these particular tasks. Um, if you could use a template or not, templates are a great place to start and they're easily customizable once you grab a template and use it. Uh, would a form be useful in creating or adding to the list? So for example, if you had a list that had five items on it and you wanted to add another item, um, you can create a form to just fill out just like a, a Microsoft form would be uh, in order to fill out additional information um, on that list. Or you can add items directly to the list, um, or you can import items even from a different uh, product like Excel into a list. <clears throat> and one thing I found useful for lists is the alerts that are available. So you can um, send yourself or Microsoft will send you an alert you can, you can set in there if a new list item is created or if a list item is modified. So anytime something is changed, you can be notified of that, even if you didn't do the specific change. <clears throat> so for a demo today, and hopefully, um, you know, I, I mean this to be a little, little loose, hopefully, <clears throat> um, let's create a list for renovation, issue reporting, and resolution tracking. So I've created several other lists that were similar to this. Uh, specifically, the main project one was for the uh, moving, moving the website to WordPress. That was a huge project and task. There were uh, several people involved, and there were many, many different items that needed to be addressed uh, related to that. And I can show you that list later, too, if we have time. So. So let me see if I can look at chat. I don't know exactly how to look. Well, that's fine. There's nothing cool. new right now, Terry. So okay. You're good. Well, I wanted to get some input from people. And I can show participants. Oh, here I can see chat. Okay, awesome. So if we're looking at a, a list of issues related to the renovation, um, and how to address them, you need to identify the issue, first of all. Um, we can report it via a form, so people don't have to be, uh, we don't have to share the list with people. They can report an issue via a form, so they don't have to enter it directly. Um, we can give issues a priority if we want to. Uh, we can assign issues uh, to an individual, or we can track uh, the resolution of those things. Okay, so let's go into list itself. So if I'm in PowerPoint, as you can see, I have the little um, way up in the top, the little nine button um, option. I can select that and I can see all the different Microsoft products. But what I'm going to do is go to m365.uncg.edu. Let me expand my window out a little bit. So it's a little bit bigger. If you go to M365, you may have never done this before. Um, it shows you all the things that uh, you worked on recently, which is interesting and sometimes disconcerting about what uh, you've been managing. But it shows you all the quick access links here and the different things you've done. But in the little nine button, 
keypad, if you want to call it that, you can see all of the apps that I have um, used recently and I've told to save to my little screen. If you don't have this option, you can search in the search 365 apps and find it. So if you do lists, you can see there's lists. <clears throat> or you can click on more apps and you can see all of the different apps that are available through Microsoft 365. And there are bunches of them. Um, so you want lists. So if you select lists, you'll get you'll see a blank page because you probably won't have any lists. The easiest thing to do, let's see, do I have to adjust this every time? I guess I do. The easiest thing to do is click on new list. It's going to give you the option to create a blank list, use an existing list, create a list from data already in an Excel spreadsheet, or create a list from a CSV which is a very simplified version of a spreadsheet. So let's take a look at the templates down here. And these are the templates provided by Microsoft. I don't believe there are any other from, from our organization. There are no templates that UNCG has uploaded. So this will give you some ideas on what is possible with lists. Um, issue tracker, that's what we're gonna create today, but we're not gonna use the template, but we'll look at the template. Employee onboarding, manage your new employees onboarding process from day one. Event itinerary, organize all your important events in one place. Asset manager, keep track of all devices. Recruitment tracker, keep everyone informed as you recruit, you know, sort of like uh, your search team. Um, <clears throat> travel requests, I guess people use that. Uh, work progress tracker, priorities and progress as you work towards delivering a product. Content scheduler, uh, playlist for videos and other things you want to look at, gift ideas, and you can see the others down here. Now, one thing that might be interesting for some people at ROI to use is the reading list or something similar, because you can create a form that will populate a list of items that um, faculty members send to you for acquisition for our, for our library. So if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to work with faculty members in a department that you represent, you could have them submit a form to you instead of just email you the specific items that they want you to order for the, through their departmental um, funding and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is create a blank list. <clears throat> now it's important here to name it something that um, is useful for you because you'll need to retrieve it by that. So I'm going to call it Reno issue. Um, let's call it reporting. And you can add a description. It's not necessary. You can present a color. Um, and you can choose a little icon. So we're, let's create a little clipboard icon so that it is. And I'm going to save it to my lists. I'm not going to save it to a team or other um, options that I have, because I want to control it at this point. And I'm going to say create. OK, I have this big white blank screen. Um, and I have add new item here. I have my list that says reno issue reporting. I have a title, and I have a add a column. Well, <clears throat> lists are basically tables. We have columns and rows. We have columns that identify the pieces of information you want to track, and we have rows to identify the specific items that you want to track. <laughs> so welcome to my new lists. There's, there's lots of things you can do here, um, including create forms or do automate, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But here's one tip. Your title is going to be whatever your issue is that you're tracking. So your title is your main piece of data for any particular list item. So we can rename that something if we want. So we can rename it. Um, oops. 
we can name it like issue reported. But it's still our title. It's going to stay in that particular space. Then we can add a column. And here are all the different values that we can create. So we can have a text. This is very similar to um, forms, if you're familiar with forms. We have text option, a choice option, date and time, multiple lines. We can assign a person. Uh, we can choose a number, yes or no answer, or hyperlink, money, location, image, all these things. So I'm going to click a text option. I'm going to click next. And the name of it is going to be um, reported by, right? So here is where I want uh, the name of the person um, that's going to send it, send the issue to me. So now I'm just adding additional columns. So I'm going to use multiple lines of text on this one and click next. And I'm going to say descri description of issue. And I can add additional uh, values if I want. But this is just giving me my column headers. So in addition to those things, I'm not going to, I want a location of where in the library the issue is, right? If I click a location, notice it's got the little pin drop thing. That's going to want an actual um, location as defined by uh, UNCG. So I don't want that. I just want to know where in the library it is. Okay, and then... Um, Here's a yes, no answer. So since it's based upon the renovation, I'm going to say, is this a safety issue or not? Right? So I want to know, you know, is it um, a concern about safety? It, are there uh, stair treads that aren't attached securely? Are there electrical outlets that are not covered completely? Um, anything like that. So. I have a safety issue and I'm choosing the type yes, no. So this is these are basically the issues that I want people to report to me um, if this was my list. Um, is there anything else you think? I'm throwing this out for people in the chat that may be useful for us to record from people who might submit uh, a request to us. What do people think? I've looked at it to try to identify, like, tell me when this was reported. But email a person submitting. OK, great. How about a date? I agree, a date would be useful. And I'm sure there's a way we can add a date in here. Um, so now we're looking at, so let's do, Um, I could do height. I wonder if, well, I, I'm not going to guess at things. So we'll, we'll add email. And notice email is here, so I can slide column settings. I can move that left. And I can move it left. See, it's not really. I'm going to show you some ways to get around this so it's a little easier. So now I've got reported by their email and description in the columns. <clears throat> so we've got this uh, table, if you want to say, with no issues in it right now. The nice thing about <clears throat> lists is that they're really tied to the forms. So if I look at the form, if I click on forms, I'm going to create a new form and notice it created a form that has all of my data already in it. So that's pretty amazing to me, but it, the form is is very closely tied to it. So here's an add a form title. Report an issue related to the reno. OK. 
That is issue reported. Note, remember I added that in as a title before. I'm just going to get reported and I'm just going to say issue. Instead of reported by, I'm going to say your name. And this is, well, description of the issue is good. Location, oh, email is here. So notice I can drag email up to there. Um, description of the issue and the location. And is it a safety issue? Yes or no? Now, one, a couple of the things. So this has created a form for us. And I can preview that form. And um, I'm going to say loose tile. And oops, better remember my UNCG email. Um, in the description, loose tile on floor, location, ROI. And I can say if it's a safety issue or not, so I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to submit that. It says your response has been submitted. Submit another response. So if we go back to Let's see, I guess it didn't submit that because I was doing I was looking at it in draft mode. I thought it would enter it immediately. But what we can do now, um, so, so you can see how it submits, that's fine. And we'll submit an actual entry um, sooner. So what I'm gonna do though is, because these are the values that I want uh, people to submit to me, I can keep this form as is. There, there are settings for each. Um, the issue that you report or the title is always mandatory, so there's no option for that. I can say your name is required, the email's not required, the description of the issue is required, and um, location is required. So now those values um, have changed for those fields. So I'm gonna go back. <clears throat> Oh, there's my loose tile entry right there. So it sent it in and it's added to my to my list as a list entry. I can select it, I can do things with it, um, but I don't only want the results of the form as my list. I want to continue to use this list and track this issue through its resolution, okay? So I can add another column And I can do um, I can do a rating. Let's see. And then I have to slide over and I can add another column. And I can do multiple lines of text and call it a note. But I'm going to change rating here. And I'm going to call it um, priority. Priority. OK. So my priority of how I want that resolved, do I need it resolved now, priority five? Can it wait priority one or zero? I can slide over again. I can add a person column. Oh, responsible or responsibility, how about that? Ability. I have to slide over. I wish it would automatically slide over, but it doesn't. Um, I want a yes, no, and I'm gonna call it 
resolved. And then I want another column. I'm going to show you a date column, date and time. Resolved date. OK, so I, I've added these additional columns. Onto my table. So that I can use those and tracking them. So if I would get this list, you know, if. If this came in as a new report. Since it's a safety issue, I can now manually go and say it's a priority five. It's not doing that zero rated. Well, let me change this. I have not used the priority settings, so let me add a column. And I'm going to do a choice. And I'm going to I'm going to change that. Right. Ah. Priority and my choice is going to be low. Um, medium. And you can make these anything you want. And high, right? Save. And what I'm going to do is uh hide that column so I don't see it. So now I can add a priority. Resolved. Oh, priority is showing up down here. I can add a priority high. And I can name a specific person that I need, want responsibility for that. So if I if I type in will, it magically appears based upon, you know, our uh, values. And will is assigned as responsibility. And you can assign multiple responsibilities for it and add more people. I guess for this one, you can only add one. That's okay. And when I close that, I can see I have a safety issue priority note responsibility as will cook. And as the project proceeds, these other values can be added. So notice I needed to edit those by selecting the column, I mean the row, and then I could edit those directly in here. So resolved is a yes or no value. Resolve date, if I pick the date, I can use a date, a date picker for it. So hopefully you can see that. Now the other way you can edit entries is to edit it in grid view. And so now I've actually got edits. So I can say needs to be fixed immediately and hit enter, check mark, and it shows up right there. Resolved has the check mark for yes or no automatically in there, and the resolved date pulls up the date value. So you can add as many columns as you want. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Give me a thumbs up or say yes, it does. Now going back to the form, if we look at the form itself, notice that the form still only has those form values that I've specified for somebody entering the data. And on the side here, I have these values for the note and responsibility resolved and priority. So I can move the priority up. Um, if I want, I can do that in different areas. But if if I you know, I could give the user a priority option and their priority option would sit here and it says, what's their priority? Low, medium and high, right? 
So if I wanted the user to enter a priority, I can do that, or I can assign that myself once I get the issue. <clears throat> so we've got this. We can send the form by copying the link. And if I do that, I can open up a new window, paste in the link, and you can provide this any way you want via email or posting it on a website or whatever. And so here, um, let's do electrical outlet. You know, my name again is Terry B, however you want to enter it. You could do a name selector there, a person selector, and they would have to select their name. Um, um, outlet cover needs to be attached, right? Whatever you need for this. The location could be um, reading room. Um, I'm trying to think. West wall, you know, I don't know. You can do all kinds of things. It, it's just a free text field. And it's a safety issue, so I'm going to submit that. So if I go back to my reporting, issues reporting, I should see the new issue come in here soon. Um, and I can act on it just like I did before. So looking at the issues, uh, you can sort on different things. You can sort on responsibilities. Now I'm curious about how long it takes to report those. Um, so I can sort on like location A to Z. I can filter by whether there's a value there or not. Uh, safety issue, I can sort on no to yes, yes to no, filter by just the no's, those kind of things. If I edit in grid view, I can, just to show you, I can change it. Uh, assign a task to me. And if Will, I don't know why that resolve got there. And if Will fix that one already, I can assign, you know, that he fixed it on those that day. So these are all ways that you can use these lists and you can add them as many lists as you want. So enough about this form, other than I want to show you how alerts work. <clears throat> so there's a couple of ways you can automate the form up here or automate the list. You can set rules and create rules to a list. So I can say, create a rule to take action when data is changed. When a new item is created, send it to me, send me a notification, okay? And you can enter, you know, more people than more whatever. And I can create that rule. That way, when an item is created by anybody submitting a list or somebody going in and manually creating a list, I'll be notified via email. Super, super um, helpful. When an item is modified, when, um, Resolved, changes to enter a value, yes, send me an email. Okay, that way I know when Will goes in and says, yes, I've resolved that, it'll send me an email for it. I can create these rules. Super, super helpful. I can also create automated rule, I mean, uh, I can integrate this with Power Automate and Power Apps to create a flow. Um, I'm not going to go into that today, but you can create a flow to send a customized email when a new SharePoint item or whatever. I can create a flow that says when a new item is created in this list, send me all of the details that were submitted in that form. And uh, in my next, you 
ULVLC session, I'm going to talk about flows and how to create those specifically to work with reports, but they'll work the same um, with lists too. You can export this data to Excel if you want. Um, boy, that's a weird value there. Enable. And there's my value in Excel if you want. Um, I'm not going to say that. I can share it with people. Um, and I can manage access. So <clears throat> if I'm managing access to this, I can go with a group or I can share it with specific people. And I can add like Will and I can send him a notification. I don't think he's on today, so uh, we're not going to do that because he won't know what this is about. I can also copy the link and send it to somebody. And this here is whether he can view it, he can edit list items, or if he can edit the list, edit items, or he can just view it. But we're going to cancel that because we don't know it. So there's lots of things you can do with that. Um, you can add different views to it that allow you to specify how you want to see the data. I have not really used that yet. Um, and you can sort on values related to these. You can, well, you can add filters and other things too. But filters are automatically created on the top here for issue reported. So hopefully that made uh, a good bit of sense on how to create a list. I do want to show you some of the lists that I've created. <clears throat> and if anybody has any questions, let me know. So when I'm looking at lists, so one of the lists that I created recently was send me the information for your staff directory listing. Uh, the staff directory on the website is completely different than before. And I needed details from people uh, related to it. That's probably not a good one to use um, because it's got information about persons. So I'm not going to show that because it's going to go on YouTube. But let's look at um, webs, um, next gen library website editing. So here's the list that I used for myself, Marcus, and Michael to. Uh, keep track of the things that needed to be used for website editing. So you can see I created a title, you know, finalize menus, activate staff directory editing, services page, spaces page about us. And you can see there's all kinds of items here related to all the different aspects of how we uh, moved the website over and how we tracked who did what and, um, and whether it was resolved or not. So we established a lead person. And the lead persons were myself and Michael and Marcus, as you can see. We added a date completed uh, when we were done with it. Any notes uh, that we had, for example, for the staff directory, we needed to request access to add info to profiles, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, the nice thing is, is you can run these um, views and run like filter by empty and apply. So these are all the things that no dates were entered. Now, obviously, we created these. Uh, most of them were my options, creating a flow for forms and other things that I just didn't ever put in a date for. So that's an example of that. Um, if I want to go back to my lists, I can just use the back arrow and it'll bring me back. Um, University libraries. Oh, I got access denied because what I did with that form is I transferred it to the University Libraries team. You can see that there. So it's saying I don't have access to it anymore. 
So I was going to show the staff directory listing, but I'm not going to show it because it's going to go up on YouTube. Uh, and it has, you know, people's names and other things related to their positions. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with this. Let me go back to here. So to consider um, as we wrap up here, is the list appropriate for what you want to do with it? Uh, or is an Excel spreadsheet just fine? Or is, uh, you know, I thought, should I, could I create a list for co-writing um, a journal article um, and have tasks for individuals such as, you know, who's going to be responsible for the literature review? Who's going to be responsible for writing the abstract at the end um, and things like that. Uh, but my wife said, no, you're just going to put all that in a, a shared Word document. And you're just going to all edit it at the same time. So it's probably more work to go out and create a list to say who's responsible for it than to just go and actually do the thing. So don't create more work for you. Hopefully this will save you work in using a list to track items. Can other tools do just as well for organizing your tasks? Maybe, you know, if all you're doing is organizing your to-do list, use Microsoft To-Do instead of Microsoft Lists. Uh, and finally, what I have on here, does your team or the group of people that you're gonna be working with, do they really need to use another tool? Now, I will say List is a pretty easy tool to learn because it's just a, a, essentially a table that you can edit directly or you can add items to. There's not much of a learning curve for it. Uh, when I saw that it was available and I created the website, um, website move tracking tool for myself, Marcus and Michael, um, it was pretty intuitive for them to just catch up on exactly what they needed to do for it. So there's not a big learning uh, curve with this for people that you're pulling in to help you with projects uh, with a specific list. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve for you to go in and create the list and you create it the way you want. So <clears throat> that is all I've got. We've um, gone 45 minutes. I um, hope this was helpful. It was kind of, uh, I wanted to create a list from scratch so you could see that it's not that complicated to do. Um, once you've created one, it's easy to create another. And again, when we're looking at lists, you know, take a look at some of these templates. They're really nice. So if you look at the issue tracker, here is, um, you know, one of the things that is illustration for empty state is wrong. So this is examples of items to track. So they have an issue, description, priority, status, assigned to date reported, issue source, images, associated files, and issue logged by, right? If you thought, oh, this is pretty nice, use the template. You can click it and create. And it's going to create it with all those items across the top um, in your columns. <clears throat> oh, and it gives you different views too. So then you can customize the column settings to however you want. Let's go back. Some of the interesting ones that I saw were like employee onboarding. You know, we do this all the time with new employees. Um, sign, you know, sign offer letter, set up your laptop, intro to the team. Um, all of these things can be set already uh, before the person comes for onboarding and you can have it tracked by individual people who that person needs to meet. So um, all of these are just examples within the templates that you can use. And then down here for like reading list, <clears throat> you know, the book about author, genre, my rating, book cover, read, recommended. You know, this could easily be modified to a list that um, can be created and used for faculty submissions of uh, book requests. 
and see if I create the new form, the form is practically there for you. And you could just edit that, send out the form, um, and you can do that. Now, I wouldn't have this replace the uh, request the library buy a particular material on our website because that's a separate form not meant uh, for uh, departmental requests, but you could certainly do something like this for department requests. So that's all I've got for today. Um, any questions on that? It's a fairly easy tool. Um, you could probably create your first one in less than 30 minutes. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I've been messing with it a little bit here and there, so. Thanks, Terry. Um, sure. So far, there's thank yous in the chat. Um, Dallas said, this was great. I can't wait to see how we can implement it with Power Automate. Yes. Power Automate is, a, is an extremely powerful tool as it's named. Um, I only use it in a little tiny way. And uh, I'll show you that next time with forms. Nice. Um, I do have a question. I was playing mm -hmm. around with it when you were talking and um, I couldn't find a way if you're like um, creating a list from a spreadsheet for it to bring in data you already have on a spreadsheet. Um, it seems to just bring in like the top of the spreadsheet. It has, have you tried that or is it like really have to be like, because like I have some workflows that I'm like, oh, I guess we could move these over to list, but it seems like you kind of have to start fresh on the workflow that you can't like combine it from a form that already has data in it or an Excel sheet that already has data in right. it, right? I have not tested that myself, Sam. Um, that would be a good thing to experiment with. You know, search for it out on Google. Somebody's probably done it. <laughs> so. Yep. Thanks, That's everyone. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, are there any other questions before we wrap up this session? Um, again, the next session is on um, student success on October 22nd at 1 p.m. It's in the um, you all will see Teams channel where this recording will be. I will also put this recording on um, YouTube for closed captioning and on our ULVLC channel. And just a friendly reminder um, that um, if you have ideas for ULVLC sessions, ULVLC sessions to let me or Jenny know. OK, great. Well, thank you, Terry. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.